All right. Good morning, AP Stats. Sorry I couldn't be there with you today on this Thursday, or I guess for those of you watching on Wednesday. Um, but here are the notes for today. Basically, what we are going to talk about now, rather than talking about a significance test for the difference of two proportions, we're going to focus on the significance test for the difference of two means. Um, so these notes that I'm going to kind of talk you through are on Schoology as well. So I realize my handwriting is a little bit better on the iPad. If you'd like to look at those on Schoology, they are there for you. Otherwise, here they are in OneNote. And if you need to pause the video at any point, if I'm moving too fast, feel free to do so. Okay, so when you are looking at the sampling distribution of a difference between two means, and you're looking at the shape, center, and spread, those are the three things, and their formulas are similar to what they are for proportion. For the shape, the only shape that you'll be able to say anything about is whether or not it's approximately normal, which again, conditions you check there, if both of your sample sizes are at least 30, and one is greater than or equal to 30, and n2 is greater than or equal to 30, then you can say that it's approximately normal. No n times p, there is no p. There is no proportion that we're looking at. So just looking at large counts, or if it says that both of the populations were normal, then obviously you don't even need to check this. For the center, if you're looking for the mean of x bar 1 minus x bar 2, then you just take your population mean for mu1 minus mu2, and there are no conditions that you have to check. Spread, when you're looking at standard deviation of the difference, basically you take the square root of one standard deviation squared over n1 plus your second standard deviation squared over n2. And the conditions that you do need to check there is that you need to make sure that 10 in 1 is less than or equal to capital N1 and 10 in 2 is less than or equal to capital N2. So the same 10% condition that we've always had to check for spread. Okay, so what we are going to focus on today though is how to do a two sample t-test for the difference between two means. The conditions that you need to check, very similar to the ones that were just up above. When you're checking that it's random, make sure that your data comes from a random sample or some kind of a randomized experiment. For the 10% condition, again, that's N1 is less than or equal to 1 tenth capital N1. Same for the second sample. For the normality or large counts condition, both populations are normal, then you're done. Or if both samples are at least 30, that works too. And then for degrees of freedom, here's the one that's just a little tricky because there are two separate values that you could use for degrees of freedom. So you will use the smaller of n1 minus 1 and n2 minus 1. Whichever one is smaller, that's the one you go with. Now your calculator is going to use something different. So don't worry about that. Just focus on for degrees of freedom, which one would be smaller. All right. And then here's your test statistic. If you notice, again, we are using t as our test statistic. And to calculate t, you take x bar sub 1 minus x bar sub 2. That quantity minus mu sub 1 minus mu sub 2. That quantity, all of that, over the square root of standard deviation s sub 1 squared over n1 plus standard deviation s sub 2 squared over n2. With, again, with degrees of freedom being the smaller of n1 minus 1 and n2 minus 2. For the standard error of x1 minus x2, basically just using statistic in the place of any unknown parameter is getting the margin of, or the standard error. Okay, so let's look at an example, and that'll be it for today. So in this example, after buying many helium balloons only to see them deflate within a couple of days, Aaron and Jenna decided to test if helium-filled balloons deflate faster than air-filled balloons. To find out, they bought 60 balloons of the same type and randomly divided them into two piles of 30, filling the balloons in the first pile with helium and the balloons in the second pile with air. Then they measured the circumference of each balloon immediately after being filled and again three days later. The average decrease in circumference of the helium-filled balloons was 2.5 centimeters, with standard deviation 1.92 centimeters. Average decrease of the air-filled balloons was 2.1 centimeters, with a standard deviation of 2.79 centimeters. Do these data provide convincing evidence that helium-filled balloons deflate faster than air-filled balloons? Okay, so in step one in our statement, we need to say what two parameters we are interested in, which would be mu1 and mu2. Now mu1, let's, be, that, let's let that be the mean decrease in diameter of the helium 
fill balloons. So again, we're looking at the mean decrease in diameter of the helium filled balloons. And then let's let mu2 represent the mean decrease in diameter of the air filled balloons. Okay, and then let's go ahead and for our significance level, assume that our significance level is going to be 0 0.05 since it was not given to us. All right, let's also state our hypotheses here. Let's let our null hypothesis be that there is no difference. In other words, that mu1 is equal to mu2. And let's let our alternative be that we think the diameter decrease for the helium balloons is a bigger decrease than the ones with air. In other words, that mu1 is greater than mu2. All right, so now here is the second step. Let's write out our plan. So we are going to do a two sample t-test. Again, that'll be a calculator command that we will look at in just a little bit, doing a two sample t-test. Let's first check our conditions and ask ourselves, was this random? And it was. They talk about randomly picking out the balloons, sorting them, we are good there. Second thing, let's check our sample sizes. We were given a sample of 30, so multiply by 10. Could you have potentially bought more than 300 balloons of either of these two types? And I would say, yes, we're good to go there. And then the last one, they divide them into two piles of 30. And this is where you have to be very careful. You're asking yourself, is 30 greater than or equal to 30? And is 30 greater than or equal to 30? And in which case, both of them are. It was just barely enough. They had just enough balloons to be able to get by with that large counts condition. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do our t-test. So on your calculator, what you will do then, go to stat, over to tests, and you're doing a two sample t-test, which would be option number four. And for the input, we didn't put any data in, so we're gonna wanna use stats. So go over to stats and press enter. And let's put in all the information we were given. So the mean, mean one, it said the average decrease of the helium filled balloons was 2.5 centimeters. So we'll put in 2.5. Standard deviation, it said, was 1.92. And then our sample size, remember, for both was 30. For the air-filled balloons, it had an average decrease of 2.1 centimeters. Standard deviation was 2.79 centimeters. And once again, sample size of 30. And then for our alternative, we thought the mean for the first one was going to be bigger than the mean for the second one. Don't worry about pooled, just leave that alone. And then go ahead and hit calculate. Okay, and so here is what I am getting. I'm getting a T value of 0.646. For degrees of freedom, I'm getting 51.4. And for my P value, I'm getting 0.26. Okay. So, writing these up as our conclusion. And well, first, let's write these up for our do step. So, for our do step, at this point, we said our t value, and I have to keep switching back and forth, t value was 0.647. Let's see, p value was 0.26. And let's see, degrees of freedom, 51.4. All right. Now, for our conclusion, we would say because our p-value was 0.26, so in other words, because p was 0.26, 
which is greater than our significance level of 0 0.05 we failed to reject our null hypothesis. In other words, there was not convincing evidence. That helium filled balloons deflated faster. All right. And then last thing we'll do, we're in, we'll, <clears throat> excuse me, interpret the p-value that we got in the context of this study. So basically what that means, and remember our p-value that we got up here was 0.26. What that p-value is saying, a p-value of 0.26 means that assuming the null hypothesis is true our sample will occur Twenty six percent of the time in this population. Now, an alternative to kind of this interpretation, because there are multiple ways that you can interpret a p value, an alternative interpretation would be to say that assuming the null hypothesis is true, you can expect to get sample means of the two that we had, which were, let's see, 2.5 centimeters and 2.1 centimeters by chance alone would be another way of interpreting your p-value in a different manner. Really, that's all I've got for you guys. The rest of class is yours to work on any homework that you need to get finished up, whether that's what's due today or what's due on Friday's class. Friday's homework is also posted on School G for you. It is over significance tests for the difference of two means. Have a great rest of your day, guys, and I will see you then.